Aloha to all my friends out there and mahalo for stopping by for another speed build. My name is Leaf and as always it's so great to have you guys here for probably my favorite one so far. So yeah, I when I started building this I was like this can't really be that good. Like, you know, it's going to be underwater like it, even you see right here I'm struggling to get the fencing and like the gate to work out good. But in the end, this is probably my favorite build, and I really do hope you guys enjoy it. So yeah, if you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this little bit of a speed build. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking all this out. It really means a lot for me to see, like, all you guys stop by. You guys stop by enough. All right, I'll, st I'll stop all that. But yeah, today we are building a Hawaiian diorama, and you know... I figure no one else is really using mods for their dioramas, so I might as well just use all my fish mods at once. So I tried my best to determine what the best species would be for a little bit of a Hawaiian diorama, especially for this, because I don't like I don't really know. Like I feel like a lot of these fit in so well, especially the whale shark and the humphead wrasse. The turtle, the shark, all of them, all of them fit in really good, and I just really do love how well they all turned out in here. So yeah, you can see me start to like struggle with the water a little bit. It was being a little bit funky for me, but I eventually get it settled down. So over here I start to make work on a little bit of a bungalow that I start to make. So I wanted to go for a little bit of a kind of, I guess you could kind of call it like a little bit of a traditional like Hawaiian dock house, I guess. I think it comes out so well in the end. It just, it's framed so well by everything in here. I use some Nick's custom palms. I use a lot of like his Africa pack and stuff like that. I use like a lot of like ZZ's corals. It just all culminates in such a beautiful build. I didn't really have too many high expectations for it going into it, but it turned out amazing in the end. And I really do hope you guys enjoy it and love every single inch of the speed build. I think this is my best build in Planet Zoo yet. It just turned out so beautiful. And you can see me start to do like a little bit of dock work down here. Um, it, it was just really fun to just figure all this out and make sure it's usable by like all the animals and stuff because that is very important. You can see me sort of put down some like, I guess you'd call them stairs. Yeah, because that's what you use to go down on certain levels and they lined up perfectly. No clue how that happened. That was a grace of God right there, but yeah, just me basically just making this house look nice, and it looks so good. I love these pieces of wood. My only qualm with them is that they're not in the scenery part of the building tab. You can only get them in the enrichment tab, which is such a bad idea to keep these like locked away like that, especially with the normal Planet Zoo logs. I have no clue why like all the climbing stuff is secluded to there, when you could have them like in both sections, I guess you could. I'm not really sure if you can, but I know you can do that with scenery so scenery and foliage, so I figure why not be able to do that with like enrichment. Maybe I'll make like a post about that on the forums later. But no, I just really do love how well that wood turns out. It's such a nice bright and subtle color. And here I am working on like a little bit of like kind of framing that because that piece of glass wouldn't go down. I tried my best to kind of work with that, but I figured we might as well hide it with some rocks. And you know what, in the end we hide it with some rocks and some foliage. And you know what, that's my two best friends right there, just making sure I can hide stuff well with that. And it turns out really good in the end. And you know what, I'm really happy with it. Like guys, I cannot get over how well this build looks. I'm sorry, and I know I mentioned this in my last diorama video, but sitting down and being able to appreciate- I'm sorry if you hear jingling right there, that's my little puppy right there. But being able to sit down and appreciate the builds that you put out in these speed builds, it's so- it's so humbling to know, like, your build came from nothing, and you make something from it, especially with these dioramas. It's so- I don't know. It was really, really fun to do, but- yeah, here I am just working on a lot more of like the architecture of the house. I wanted to do a little bit more intricate designs, but I felt like that would take away from the main star of the show, which would be the whole underwater section. Section. So you may be wondering, Leaf, why the heck do you have like two different pools in here? Why do you not even have anything in the other pool? And to that I say, it looks good. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I just like the idea of having a complete separate section in here. And, I don't know, it's just really, really cool. It kind of gives it a little bit more character. Kind of like, 
I don't know, you have, let's talk about coral reefs for a second. You have like this big, beautiful coral reef section in a big tank, right? And then you have like this little rocky outcrop that, you know, some fish like to circle around and stuff on. Granted, there's no fish in here, but you know, it, it works. <laughs> it works. But yeah, I also have the green sea turtle in here and it turns out really good. And you can see how goofy the uh, whale shark is in here. I don't really mind it though, because it just adds to the vibes. It just adds to the vibes, that's all. That's all I'm gonna say. And we also do have the Hawaiian monk seals in here. Completely forgot that I made those, <laughs> I'm gonna be completely honest. But yeah, it's just really great to have. And I also forgot to add Bongo Hardwood's Nene in here. So I may go back and do another Hawaii build later on and include them and have like a little bit of like a Hawaiian farm, maybe some volcanoes and stuff like that. I'm not really sure, but we can focus on that later. But here I am working on a lot more of like the rock work around here. And I'm just checking out like all the animals in here. The whale shark moves really good. Like when you're in a speed build like this, it looks really nice. And it just, I don't know, it just really helps to sell the vibes. I'm a really big fan of it. I know a lot of people aren't the biggest proponents of the whale sharks or the fish mods for that matter, but you know what? I will adamantly defend them. They're my babies, they're my children, and I will protect them until the cows come home. Or at least cowfish. Haha, <laughs> the spotted box fish or whatever. Haha, <laughs> I'm so funny and quirky. I know fish. But no, nonetheless, here I am just working on this. I had Nick yelling in my ear this entire build like, Oh, it doesn't look like it's from Hawaii Leaf. What the hell are you doing? You need some palm trees in there. So you know what, Nick? These palm trees are for you, baby. Check them out. I use all your palms. I use your funny little birds of paradise. I use your funny like Washingtonian palms or whatever. I don't really know. But no, that really did help me out with like selling this a lot more. I really do love these ones. I don't know. I just really love the palms in here. They have such a different kind of texture than the other palms. And it just helps to differentiate it a lot more. It just, you know, all these small details that you can kind of like focus on when you're building. It just really helps to sell the whole vibe. And here I am using a little bit of eel grass to kind of make it a lot more lush. And I have these palms hanging off right there. I should have put a boat in here. Maybe like a catamaran. But I don't know, maybe we can do something like that for a Galapagos build. Wink, wink, hint, hint. And here we go again using the old, good old bold technique. So bold equine, I guess you're not even called bold equine anymore. You're just called bold. But no, amazing job with this technique. This has been a lifesaver because, you know, any schmuck can use a blueprint. I mean, a uh, billboard, but it takes a lot of like effort. It takes a lot of love to actually make something that looks like this. And you know, I'm just a really big fan of how well it came out. So I took the Hawaiian license plate. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm a big fan of license plates too. My dad collects them and he kind of got me on the hobby as well. And I don't know, they're just really cool to like admire. It's just like different art pieces from each state. I don't know, it's just, it's just really cool, nice Americana. But here I am kind of like trying to replicate my own with like, you know, font pieces and stuff like that. And you can see we start to get a little lazy, so I start to copy like all the flat shapes. Thank you. I gotta give a big mahalo, a big shout out to Hawaii. Thank you guys for making your text on your sign angular. Because if it was anything like the Alaska one, I would have cried. But you know what? We use the Noto font in here as well, just to kind of give myself a little peace of mind. And it turns out really good in the end. And you know what? I don't think anyone will really care if I take a little shortcut here and there. But no, I just really do love how this came out and we frame it nice in here as well and we frame it with some bamboo later on. It just turned out so well. And I'm just, guys, I'm geeking out about this. I'm sorry, dioramas are easily my favorite thing to build now. Maybe, I, I wanna get back into Foxborough soon enough and start building like real zoos and stuff like that, but damn, I love this trend so much. I'm so sorry. But yeah, it's just really fun to just hammer it down, just start to get like all these builds going. I'm surprised a lot more people aren't taking advantage of the diorama trend because it's so fun. Like it's not even like you're selling out, you're building for yourself. And you know what? That's my biggest like advice to any aspiring Planet Zoo player who wants to put out YouTube videos. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even call myself a YouTuber even, but I don't know. Just putting out videos, doing quick little speed builds like this, it doesn't just, you're not doing it for YouTube. You're doing it for the fact that you like seeing yourself improve 
do like seeing yourself progress through like the ages and stuff like that. I love personally taking a step back, putting my videos on mute of course, because I cannot stand the sound of my own voice, but I'm surprised that you guys can even stand it at that rate, but no, just taking a step back, looking at my speed builds from before, and just seeing my growth as like a content creator, not even a content creator, as a builder first and foremost, and seeing all that come through because, I don't know, it's just really, really amazing to have that retrospective. Here I am kind of like having that little bit of a paint like kind of look to it. And I will say Z fighting came in clutch here. I know a lot of people don't really like Z fighting in this regard, but it really did help sell like this sort of painted vibe that the Hawaiian license plate kind of has. I don't know, it just came out really good, and I didn't want to do, like, the guitar. I kind of just opted for palm trees. I feel like I wouldn't be killed for doing that, so I really do hope you guys don't mind that one. I think it comes out good nonetheless. It just looks really cool in the end. But yeah, here I am, just kind of lining it up right there. Just wanting to have it be nice and front and center right there. Oh no. And here I am, using all of ZZ's blueprints in order to kind of, like, flesh out Woo! Just kind of flesh out like all the coral reefs and stuff like that. I'm sorry, this is like my fourth video recording today and my voice is a little tired. I hope you guys can forgive me for that. But yeah, I do love how well ZZ was able to capture so much of this different fauna from the undersea life. And yes, coral is a fauna. Coral is a leaving, 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 wow. It technically is leaving because pollution, hey! But it is a living, breathing organism that survives i guess you could say it survives it doesn't really thrive anymore but it survives on the ocean floor and stuff like that and these like large clusters or polyps and stuff like that i don't know it's just a really interesting creature so yeah you could say i have hundreds and hundreds of different animals in this exhibit within this small area i don't know i just really do love how well this came out and i use like some of this neptune grass and stuff like that and mermatic kelp Actually, no, that's from Sims. What the hell am I talking about? Oh my god. But yeah, I just really do love how this all came out. I used some of the brain coral in here. I know these were made by me. I gave ZZ these, <laughs> but these were originally made by me. So I don't know if you guys remember way back in the day, but I had this little project called um, Paleo Park, and I had the Ichthyodites, and I had like the Ichthyostega as like little builds in there. It was such a long time ago, damn. And I had the Thylacine speed build. Wow, what a really nice retrospective. I don't know, I kind of miss that. But yeah, I had those before like new species mods even came out. But yeah, just rehashing those, I guess. I don't know, I'm just taking a little stroll down memory lane. But yeah, just making sure the rest of the rock work looks good in there. I get rid of all that and I do the framework. Now the framework is easily like one of the most important parts of the diorama, I gotta say. Like in retrospective, it's probably the most important part just because it serves as like the base, it serves as a frame for like what you're presenting. You can have like God's creation up there, but if you just have it on a bunch of dirt, you know, it kind of looks just okay. Like it's really the frame what sells it. It's kind of like a picture, if you will. Kind of like how, you know, if you talk to any photographer, they will tell you that, you know, the frame matters just as much as a picture and that's the same thing that goes for dioramas. And you guys can kind of see me kind of just like have this little bit of a bamboo one and I do decorate it with a lot of plants. I'm not sure if I actually capture that in the speed build or not, but it's just this very important aspect of it. I love how well it frames with this one right up here. I love, I just love this one so much guys, I'm so sorry, but it's just such a beautiful, beautiful framework for all this. I don't know, I'm just very forward with it. And of course we kind of continue that all the way around to the back. You know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, Hear me out, I'm just spitballing right here. I kind of do want to add some implied pumps and stuff like that. Kind of like life-size pumps, so I'm not sure how well, like, we could frame a human in this regards. But I would like to add a little bit of human, like, kind of human scale ability to this. Just basically these little windows into these little states and stuff like that. Maybe have, like, some HVAC pipe kind of, like, feeding into there so, like, the water gets filtered and stuff like that. I don't know, I feel like that'd be really awesome to have, so that's at least a little idea from my regard, but, you know, we can focus on that later. Here I am, just doing a little bit more foliage work as well, hopefully we're gonna pop into that little part right there. Oh yeah, I add some bubbles as well. I add a lot of bubbles, actually, because, you know, you can have animals flowing around in here, but the bubbles is what's really gonna sell it, because unfortunately with modded fish and stuff like that, 
you don't get the same bubble effect that seals, that otters and caimans usually have. Unfortunately, you're going to have to like incorporate those yourself. So adding those bubbles in there is what really helps to sell it. And here I am doing like a lot of the foliage work around here. I love those Kentia palms. They are so freaking beautiful. And of course, the frontier palms are amazing as well. But yeah, just making sure that this whole thing is lush on the outside and lush on the inside. Just making sure that we have that happy little balance going on in here. And yeah, I'm just so happy with how this one came out. I'm so sorry. I, you guys are probably sick of me saying it, but I'm just so happy with how it came out. I'm sorry. Like, there's nothing else to say. Like, I'm just really proud of this one. I don't know. It just makes me so happy. I love tropical builds. I really want to go to Hawaii someday. It seems like such a beautiful, beautiful place. Like, just like, I don't know. The people there seem so happy. The food there seems so good. The lifestyle there seems so chill. I don't know, I just would really love to check it out one day and just, you know, visit a pineapple farm. But yeah, here we are in the live video. So I really do thank you guys for sticking around. I really do thank you guys for checking this one out. This one is easily my favorite build out of any single other diorama that I've done so far. So look at the little monk seal right there. It's so cute. They're critically endangered. I feel bad for the guys. And of course the grass. I love that little guy right there. Don't mind the UI pop in right there. <laughs> But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to drop a little humble like. Be sure to drop a little humble comment. Be sure to just let me know what your favorite thing was about this build. And I'll tell you what, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, and I hope you guys have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye, man.